Good evening. We're in a brand new unit and we're moving on now to measurement, geometry, uh, that kind of thing. And the first video of this particular unit is going to be on volume. Probably heard the word volume before but didn't really know what it meant. Well, Vic, let's start off with that. What is volume? You may have heard it. Don't know what it is. This is the amount of three-dimensional space an object occupies, how much space it takes up. Another word for volume is capacity. You've heard us use that term, I know, in class of capacity, how much something can hold. That's what volume is. It's just another, it's a, maybe a fancier word for it. What is a three-dimensional figure? You've heard of 3D before, probably. Uh, what does that mean? This is a figure that has three dimensions. It has height, it has length, it has width. There's three dimensions, and this is why it's 3D. Um, all the other figures that we've been using are two-dimensional. They, like when we figure up area or perimeter, they only have length and width. They don't have the height factor thrown in. So that's why three dimensions. We talk about things that are cubic or cubic units, and you may think, I don't, I don't understand what that means. It does refer to a cube. A cube has height, width, and, and uh, length. Uh, the volume of solid figures is measured in what we call cubic measurements. Okay? It can be expressed as an exponent. For example, this would be 24 cubic units. It's used as an exponent with a 3 there. Remember that 2 was squared. 3 refers to it being cubic. This 3 refers to the three dimensions, height, width, and length. So when we talk about volume, uh, we express it in cubic units. When we talk about area, we express it in squared units. All right. Volume is an attribute. And I have it in red here because that's kind of a vocabulary word. It's an attribute of a solid figure. It's a way of describing something. We say attribute all the time. And what it means, it's a characteristic of it. Um, people have attributes. Well, so do solid figures. For example, if I looked at this rectangular prism, and by the way, I am not an artist, so if this is not perfect, forgive me. This rectangular prism could be described as having six faces, like faces on the side, on the front, top, bottom, and the back, the one you can't see. It could be described as having 12 edges. These are like the edges along the sides. Okay. It could be described as having a length of 5 feet, a width of 2 feet, and a height of 1 foot. It could also be described as having a volume of 10 cubic feet. And these kind of things that I've said, faces and edges and that kind of thing, are attributes. And an attribute is a characteristic of the figure. Something that it has that makes it different from another figure. Okay. And it's a way to identify a figure. All right, what is the volume of this rectangular prism in cubic inches? Now, I've drawn little cubes here, uh, and they would be cubic inch size. They would be cubed um, an inch uh, in width, an inch in length, an inch in height. Um, this has a length of six inches, a width of three inches, and a height of four inches. Uh, I could have drawn the little cubes all the way up to the top. I didn't. We could use one-inch cubes to find out what the volume is. All right. And as you can see from this model, there are three rows that shows the width. There are six columns of cubes that shows the length. And so six times three is 18. So this whole first layer here is 18 cubes. The figure is 4 inches tall, 4 inches high. So if I wanted to find out how many cubes total there would be, I could say 18 times 4. There would be 4 layers. All right, And that would be 72. So I could say that the volume 
of the figure is 72 cubic inches. Uh, I could write it like this. This is how you'll see it on the EOG. Or I could write it like this. You won't see it like that. So you, you're going to be seeing in class a lot of pictures of cubes. If it was feet, it would be a cubic foot. If it was a centimeter, it would be a cubic centimeter cube. But here we're using one inch cubes because we are expressing the measurement in inches. All right, we know that there's a formula to, ca uh, to calculate area. We've learned that, and that's length times width. Volume is a formula to calculate it also, and that's length times width times height. You can't multiply all three of them at once. You have to do two first, then multiply that by your third measurement. As an example, what would the volume of this rectangular prism be? All right, it has a length of five centimeters. One, two, three, four, five. It has a width of one centimeter, and it has a height of eight centimeters. All right. So we could say length times width times height would be five times one times eight, and that would equal our volume. All right. We could do the first two. Five times one is five. We haven't done this yet, so we put it here. We could then say five times eight would be our volume, and that five times eight is 40. We would express it as 40 cubic centimeters because it's measured in centimeters and these are all cubes. In other words, you could stack 40 centimeter cubes inside of this figure to show how much it would hold. That's volume, length times width times height. Well, what if a question only gives you two of the three dimensions of a figure? Okay. What, how could you find the missing value, or could you find the missing value? The way that you would do this is to do a kind of a, a form of working backwards. I'll show you what I mean. Let's say, example, a rectangular prism has a volume of 60 cubic inches. We know what its total is. Now we know the length, the length is 5 inches, and the width is 6 inches. Okay, what is the height of the figure? We know what the length is, we know what the width is, but what's the height? How tall is it? So I've said that 60 is our total amount. 5 times 6 times something, this is my unknown, I don't, I don't know what it is yet. 5 times 6 times something is 60. All right, multiply these first two. 5 times 6 is 30, okay? 30 times something equals 60. Now, you could use your powers of multiplication and say, well, I know that 30 times 2 is 60. Or, if you didn't know that, you could work backwards. Take this, put it here. 60 divided by 30, because I know what that is. I just don't know what this is. All right, 60 divided by 30 would be n, and if I did the division, I come out with 2. So what's the height of my figure? It's 2 uh, inches, because we're measuring in inches here. I just work backwards. All right, tonight we have three practice problems. Two of them are here. Don't turn it off yet, because I'm going to move this, and there's one behind it. A... Uh, by the way, show your work on your homework guide. Here, what is the volume of this figure? This is a rectangular prism, so is this one. What is the volume of this? And of course, you can put this on pause and write it down. And then here's our last question. And if you have any questions, let me know in class when we go over the homework guide. Okay, good luck.